I think we're gonna hook up with something big. Oh! Well, keep her king, man. There we go. Is it a Goliath? It's a Goliath! Oh! That is the biggest golden tile I've ever seen. It's a sea monster. Oh my gosh, that is a big fish. God's providing, which he does well. What's going on, Scripture Surfers? Sorry it has been so long. It's just been nonstop family stuff. Um, but not only that, the seas have been pretty rough. Ever since Hurricane Nicole and Ian came through, we've had nothing but bad waves. It's been anywhere from three to nine feet offshore. Even this weekend, there had a 17-foot forecast out there out of Ponce Inlet uh, within a 20-mile radius. So that's, that's really bad. I'm not heading out in those type of waves. It's pretty gnarly. So what have I been doing with my time in order to stay in the sport? So here's what I've been focusing on, guys. Diving. I don't know if you can see, but we've got some diving gear I'm going to walk you through today because there's been two things I've been really looking at. The first is I've been working on getting my captain's license, which is called a six-pack. And so that allows me to take up to six uh, patrons with me to go up to 100 miles offshore. So if I wanted to do charter fishing, which I'm hoping to do so some of you guys can come out with me, I'll be able to do that. Not only that though, you get to learn a lot of safety tips and boating etiquette that you'd want to know as a captain. And so that's primarily where I wanted to focus on my time while I was landlocked. But not only that, I really wanted to get into the sport of scuba diving and free diving. I've been free diving for really a lot of years, getting offshore and going down to about 40 to 50 feet. That's about the depth I can go for almost two minutes of breath hold. But I think really what I wanted to get into now is some deeper water, bigger fish. So to do that, you gotta get into scuba diving. So let me show you guys what I ended up picking up so you can see the gear. All right guys, so one of the things I'm gonna show you here is my Koa Offshore Blue Water Spear Gun. This is called a Euro Roller. And the reason for that is that if you look at the back right here, you'll see that there's two little notches where I can keep the band. And the actual band rolls underneath and comes over to the top. And when I pull, all that power of that band when I load it on the shaft is from the base of it in the bottom. So it's just completely launching this thing out. I think it gives it to 25 to 30% more uh, strength in the band when you do that. And then you've got an additional top band here. These are 5 8 bands. Uh, for you guys that have koas and you're like, hey, why do you have a different color band on there? Uh, pretty simple. I was struggling with my technique to get this band locked on to the shark fin here. And so what I ended up doing was going to a shop and saying, hey, can you extend my band about another inch just to give me the additional pull? And now it's not as hard. So if you guys are finding it difficult to actually get your bands loaded, just know you can go to an experienced dive shop and they'll be able for spear guns to be able to adjust your bands for you to make it work. So again, this is a uh, line end shaft, so it's got a reel. So what would happen is, let's say I'm going after like a, a Wahoo or something. Generally, you're going to have a float line with a little buoy. But if I come into a smaller one or even around uh, reefs on snapper or something, you know, I'm able to shoot the fish. The flopper goes through, locks onto the fish. And then what I'm able to do is just swim up to the top if I'm free diving. So this isn't really going to be used for scuba diving. This is more of my free diving gun. In addition to that, I just picked this up and I'm really excited about it. This is my Ocean Rhino reef gun. So this is what I would use it for. So this is a free shaft gun. So what that means is when I'm ready to go fire this off and shoot it, the spear comes out and there's no line attached to it. This spear itself, the shaft, is pretty heavy. So when it hits the fish, provided it's not a very large grouper or some sort of a large snapper, this will actually weigh down the fish and it'll come down to the bottom and I'd be able to grab it, fight it, pick it up, dispatch it, and that's it. Not only that, but it's a fast loading spear gun. So this is meant for me to be able to quickly, if I needed to, to reload again. So all I have to do, it's got a commercial front end butt to it. So you take your shaft, load it in from the front, drop it down in, push, it's locked in, and I can fire again. The really cool thing about this gun that I like is this uh, item right here, which allows me to turn it immediately into a lined shaft. 
So let's say I'm like, oh, that's a bigger fish than I'm gonna be able to keep with a free shaft. I need to have something to tether onto. I can quickly, with the, what's called the evolution system, take this off, that fast, clip it on, boom, now there's a line on. So right away, I've already got a line on there that'll hold against my gun should I need it with the 300 pound mono. And you'll see, so you need to be within about four to five feet of this fish. Now the other thing it can do is if you wanted to swim around with it, it's pretty simple. So you wrap it around, get the bungee, pull up, boom. And there you go, now you can swim around like that. And so I've installed a couple things. One is right here on the side, I installed an additional shaft holder. So now I've got another free shaft right there as needed. There's a kill spike right here on the front. So this is permanently mounted on there just for safety. The other thing it allows me to do is I can go ahead and get my flashlight. My flashlight comes with a specific mount and I can put this right on the end of my kill spike. Just push it down on there. And then now when I'm going around rocks, caves, I'm able to see exactly where my light's pointing, where the fish is. I don't have to have one hand free to hold a light on my vest to then find it and shoot because the fish can get spooked. So what I'm able to do is just wherever it lines up, shoot, done. If I need to take it off, you just pull it off the end for safety. There you go. Now, I've also got on this rod, you guys will see this for sharks, what's called a PPD, a personal protection device. But you load a bullet in there, you put this cap on, get the cap on there as tight as it'll go. You take this PPD, you put it on here. And now when you shoot your shaft at the shark, if it's coming at you, the impact of this hitting the shark with a bullet will immediately fire it and discharge it. So your shaft is gonna come out of your spear gun. Just be aware of that, guys. All right, guys, so the next thing I'm gonna show you here is my setup I'm gonna to use to actually travel with the gear. So if you look here, shout out to Mangrove Marine. Mike over there did an awesome job over in St. Petersburg area. I had to go yesterday to pick it up. But basically, this is a CNC machine fabricated device that will hold four tanks, either 80s or 100s. I'm probably gonna be using 100 um, tanks that are steel. And so they've got a base cut into the bottom of them. These devices right here are for storing your fins. So I got these Mars that they have a little holder in them. So when you guys get your dive fins, keep these because the little inserts that they have that are plastic, um, these actually will keep the form of your boot. So just keep them constantly and put them in there for your fin. And when you're ready to dive, just take them out, but it'll help uh, prolong the life of it. Now for traveling, I mean, I guess with my tanks, I could open up my tailgate and take off my tarp, but if it's raining or just on the road, I don't really wanna have these canisters where potentially they could fly out. So all you gotta do is go to something like uh, you know, Divers Direct or whatnot, and you find these little um, floaters, you lay these on the ground and you just lay your tanks right on top of them and it keeps them from rolling. So it's an easy transport system. Something I'd recommend just for additional safety as you're traveling. So guys, one of the other devices that I'm gonna be using is a fish stringer. So basically what this device does is when you've caught a fish, I've, I've shot it with my shaft, it's sitting on the bottom, I'm gonna pick it up. Before I remove the shaft, I'm gonna take this spike end right here and go through the eyes of the fish, get it onto this device, open this up. Now this is a heavy duty one. Uh, I bought this online. Had I gone back, I probably would've bought one with a little bit of a longer piece right here so that the fish are going easier. This is also harder to do as a one-handed. Uh, you kind of have to use both hands to get it. So imagine if you have a fish in your arms, you kind of have to finagle this a bit. So my advice would be uh, buy one in the shop, not online like I did. They're about 35 bucks. Um, but then you're able to load up all your fish, attach this to your BCD vest, and then just surface up, or you can attach it to a buoy and send it up for someone on a boat to come by and pick it up. So that's a device that you're gonna wanna have. When you're diving, booties. I mean, I've got a wetsuit. I'm not gonna show you guys that. You can go get any wetsuit, but I think you get booties that have got like a really solid heel to them so you can walk out if you're doing shore diving. You gotta get some gloves. So lobstering gloves going into holes, something that you can handle around um, you know, sharp objects. It's not gonna stop spikes. So like a lobster spike or a fish fin can go right through these, but it'll help you around rocks and so forth if you're trying to dive into a hole to be able to pull out some fish. Mask, 
You want to get a mask, obviously, a good quality mask. Uh, dive bag, something that's mesh, where you're able to get in and out really easily. Throw all your gear in there. You got to get your lead weights. So this goes into your BCD vest to be able to help you with your buoyancy, to make sure you're negatively buoyant so that you can sink. Otherwise, you're just going to float at the top and work all your energy out to get to the bottom. Uh, this device is actually a really cool device. So what this does is when I'm done out scuba diving in the salt water, I need to flush this vest out. Otherwise, it's going to, over the life of it, just rust out. Uh, it's going to get you know, gunk in it, mold, all that. So you can get a special BCD cleaner uh, on Amazon. And this just attaches to a hose. This device attaches over here to one of your valves on your BCD. And then all you got to do is just run the hose. So instead of you trying to figure out to get the water here, it's spraying all over you. You just connect it, fill it up with water, with soap, makes it so much easier for you to be able to clean it. Um, I've got my regulator bag. So in here, I've got my two regulators, my Octo, and my um, what I would have as my computer. And then for my pressurization. So this is really nice about the Aqua Lung one that I like. Um, again, just for a beginner diver, what I can do is take this off. So now my entire computer and my pressure gauge just come right off. So that was a really nice feature that I wanted to be able to have just for cleaning, for storage, for safety, you name it. So now over here to my BCD vest. So I'll show you guys the way that I set it up. So the way that I set it up is this is an Aqua Lung BCD vest. And so this is primarily what I'm going to be diving with. Now the setup that I've done, I'll walk you through. So right here, guys, I've got a compass. So the compass, pretty easy, is on a lanyard, able to pull it up eye level when I'm sitting there with my left hand. And all you got to do is wherever I'm aiming, I would put this red post at that direction, look at where my north bearing is, get that lined up with the north. And when I return, I would come back and make sure that the north is pointing in that direction so that I'd know where to head and I just follow the red line. It's pretty easy. Now, I looked at several different knives for scuba diving, uh, you name it, all different brands. What I found that I liked was one that was easy to access. So on the Aqualung, they actually have this unique system where inside of the vest, there's these little holes that look like this. There's two of them right here on this pouch. And on the inside, they give you screws. So this knife mounts onto your actual vest because it's an Aqualung knife with an Aqualung vest. So they match together in pair. And it's pretty simple. If I'm diving and I need help, just pinch the sides, comes right out that fast. Double-edged knife, you know, I'm tangled up in some mono from some guy's fishing line or a net or something happens going into a hole. I've got this knife very accessible, easy to clip and lock. I don't have to worry about it falling off or breaking off or slipping off of my wrist. I mean, it's right there. Just pinch it, grab it, go, switch hands. It's an easy knife. I'd highly recommend this for anybody looking for a knife if you have the Aqua Lung BCD vest, obviously. All right, so the next thing you look at is over here on this side. Again, for my computer, I'll have uh, another bungee system to be able to bring it out in front of me so it's not dangling in the water. I can just bring it out in front. Over here, I've got my light on an additional bungee, so this one I can go ahead and let go. This is more for recreational, so if I want to go underneath and look for lobsters and I don't have my spear gun, I've got my own free light right here, an underwater light. I can let it hang after I've gotten the lobster. When I'm done, just clip it back on. It's readily accessible for me right there. On this side over here, what I've installed are the emergency shears that you would have for cutting. So these things work great. I mean, you can, you can cut through anything with these for the most part. Again, just safety, uh, lobster tails, whatever I might need to get through, this thing's gonna get it done. And so how I did this was I simply zip tied it. So you just zip tie it onto the rings right here that you have on your vest. It's easy peasy. It doesn't impact anything in the middle of your vest for your pockets. And then obviously this is your weight system right here. So you pull these out, load them with the sandbag weights. And now you put them back in, you hear that clip and you're done. So super easy vest. So that's my dive gear setup guys that I'll be going out with that you'll see. I'm gonna show you the back side of this vest really quick. It's actually got a cool, unique feature. So instead of having just a band system, this actually clamps onto your tank and tightens it. It is not gonna fall out. 
So it's got two different holsters for where your tank will go on. So right here, what you have is your release valve for your BCD to be able to get out the air. It's pretty standard. So you guys that have already been diving, this to you is elementary. But for those that are wanting to get into the sport, I wanted to show you a little bit about what goes into diving gear that you would need to get. And again, I've got a wetsuit that I've got um, in my house for when I go out, which I'll probably be wearing all the time. It's a three millimeter wetsuit. So now what I'm gonna take you guys to is my free diving gear. So my free diving gear is over here where I've got my wetsuit. Well, it's really not a wetsuit. This is an open cell suit that snaps on over top of your gear right here for your board shorts or whatnot. I then have dive gloves these dive gloves actually have a little rubber insole where the uh, forefinger and thumb go. And the nice thing about that is when you're using pull spears, that just helps the inside of your hand not rub off. <laughs> you got a weight belt. So I got my weight belt with a dive knife for my weight belt. And this knife isn't really for protection. I mean, it could be. The predominant use is, for, um, is actually going to be for dispatching the fish. That's the main objective. Here, I've got flashers. So this is a throw flasher. You throw this out in the ocean in front of you when I'm on the top of the water. And this little rubber device right here will just keep it buoyant. And if I need to make it drop faster, I can cut pieces of it off to make it a little uh, less buoyant. But uh, the fish will come in, check it out like a wahoo or something, and then you can spear at it as it's approaching you. I've got a rattler, so when I'm free, free diving, I can go ahead and shake this on the bottom, draw up some dirt, some sand, and that noise would hopefully attract in like some snapper, a grouper, maybe some hogfish. And then for you guys that want to look at maybe building your own flasher instead of buying one, these are about 16 bucks a pop. And these right here, I just bought a PVC pipe off of Amazon. It's a two inch PVC. I drill the hole in the side of it and I put on, it's called a, actually, a, it's a bird reflectant tape. So people will put this, I guess, around their house and it chases birds away. And then I just taped it together and put a lanyard through this so I could keep it on my wrist and throw it. It also adds a little bit of buoyancy with the nylon here on this. And so I just give this a toss, let it slowly sink or sit there on the top. And again, another way to attract fish. I want to have a nice mesh bag, as I mentioned before. My fins, so a little bit different than my dive fins. These are my free diving fins. These are carbon fiber, super lightweight, um, just a really nice set of fins that I had custom made for me. The last thing I'll show you guys that I have is the uh, rash guard. So this is not a wetsuit. It's not gonna protect, protect you from, let's say a Portuguese man of war. This has really just got a pad on here for loading your spear gun. And this is just meant to uh, protect you from the sun and you know some jellyfish things, just the elements really for the most part. But that's what I'll be wearing when I go out and do free diving or I'll use my open cell suit when I'm going out into bigger water where there might be some jellyfish like Portuguese man of war. Um, you know, if I'm going to be going down into deeper holes like coral and so forth, and I want to protect myself from the coral, I would use this, hopefully not touching the elements too much. But that's it, guys. This is the setup that I'll have for going out. So I'll take my free diving gear when I go out and then my scuba diving gear as well when I'm headed offshore. Well, guys, thanks for checking out the video today. Again, looking forward to making some more videos. We've got some cool trips coming up in the next couple of months. We're heading over to Destin for a week again, so you'll have another Destin video. This time I'll be diving out there, hopefully getting for some red snapper and grouper. We're heading to the Bahamas, guys. We're going to a Bimini trip here in late July, which I'm really looking forward to. I wanna go after the Bahama lobster that they have out there, the Bohemian lobster. They're gonna have some yellow edge grouper that I wanna go after. We're gonna do some deep dropping for some queen snapper. It's just gonna be an awesome time. So stick with the channel, guys. Hope you enjoyed today and that you are feeling blessed and that God is looking upon you. All right, guys, take care.